All right, gang, let's get started. Welcome to another edition of Webinar Wednesday. It's great to be with everyone here today. If this is your first time joining the webinar, welcome. And I do see some uh, new names and faces here. Welcome. I am Jason there on the left. And we're lucky to be joined by David Rockland, the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directories. David, thanks always for taking the time to join us in these webinars. Hey, everybody. Glad to be back with you for Webinar Wednesday 136. Uh, looking forward to our guest presenter today, showing off a cool new tool to improve your members' uh, experience within their dashboards. Awesome. Absolutely. And you can head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash YouTube. And if you click on that red subscribe button, you'll get notified first anytime we upload new training videos and tutorials uh, onto our channel. Also, if you're not a member of the Brilliant Directories Facebook group, we encourage you to join. It's a great way to keep in touch and continue the conversation in between webinar Wednesdays. You can head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and click on that blue join button. Everyone is welcome. I'm in there myself. There are some great uh, conversations and things uh, started in there, very constructive and very helpful as well. All right, and for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, Webinar Wednesday is a great way for us to share some of the newer features built into the platform week after week. We like to focus on the features and the tools that can help you increase traffic, convert visitors uh, into members, improve the member journey or the visitor's journey on your website, which is actually uh, what one of the tips of the week are for today. If you have any questions on these topics or anything else about your directory or membership website, please save them. We will try to get to as many questions as possible uh, in the hour that we have today in the webinar. Okay, and we have a few BD Lab updates to share, a few exciting items here and some coming soon items that I do have some previews for as well. The first one at the top of this list, if you are using the Stripe payment gateway, now you can edit the name that shows on your members' credit card statements. So when your members look at their credit card statements and they see your company name listed uh, next to the charge, uh, you can now define a custom name uh, that will show on that credit card statement. Let me show you where that's set right now. By default, it's always been the name of your website. However, a lot of people have a single Stripe account that they're using for multiple website properties, or the corporation name is simply different than the actual name of the website. There's a few scenarios here. So let me show you if you need to where you can change and customize the name that shows on uh, your customers or your members a credit card statements. So this would be in the finance section under payment settings. And again, this is just if you're using Stripe, you can click on the edit button here. And this is what's called a statement descriptor, the name that's described on the customer statement. So uh, you can have between five and 22 characters here. It's gotta be alphanumeric, there can be spaces, uh, but now you can put uh, whatever you need uh, you know, to put here, flowers by us, et cetera, et cetera. This is also controlled within Stripe, but now you can do it easily here from your admin dashboard area as well. All right, this next one was related to the file uploads for forms add-on that was released just a few short weeks ago. A suggestion came from, uh, I think last webinar Wednesday, uh, the ability to delete files when they're uploaded from the form submissions. So I'll just quickly uh, backtrack and kind of show you what, what this is and where you can now delete files that have been uploaded with form. Uh, submissions. Uh, so this is related to the file uploads add-on. So if you go to our add-ons section at the Brilliant Directories website, you can search for the file uploads for forms. Uh, what's cool is there is also now a little tutorial video on how this add-on works. And in a nutshell, it does allow you to add uh, file upload fields to your custom forms. Maybe you want people to upload images, PDF files, their resumes, uh, what have you. They can certainly do that now with this add-on. But when we first released this add-on a few weeks ago, there was no ability to delete these said files that were uploaded with the forms. Now I can show you a few areas where you can delete the files uploaded. Let's say uh, one of the forms that were filled out, the responses come into your forms inbox page in the admin area. Uh, if you look at the full inquiry, uh, so this was someone trying to verify their account and they included a photo ID. Uh, we can see that here, we can view the file. So they've uploaded this photo ID. Let's say all is well, I don't wanna keep this 
this image or this file in my database any longer for whatever reason, uh, there is now a delete file button here and you can click yes and continue and it will permanently delete this image or this file uh, from your file manager, from, from your website. So you don't have to store this. Maybe it's sensitive, maybe you just don't need it uh, on your site anymore. That Maybe that's your way of you know, verifying or just you know, letting yourself know that you've already downloaded this file. Uh, so you can now delete it here. And there are other areas as well. In the interactions tab, we'll use the member leads as an example. Maybe people are submitting leads uh, with resumes or images um, as well. We can see here that we have a few lead samples and people have uploaded, uh, let's see, this file here. This says resume, but uh, it's just a picture here. This was just test, some tests we were doing. And this is uh, something else, another file that was uploaded with this lead. Okay, another sample ID card. Let's say we, don't, we no longer want this in the system. Uh, we can click on delete file and it will delete it from the website, from your website. And we can see here that it's no longer part of this lead. So that now exists. Uh, appreciate the suggestions. We did receive a few other suggestions around the file uploads uh, for forms add-on, and uh, we have a few of those coming down the line very soon. This next one is related to the Express Member Registration add-on, which is a free add-on that all websites have. You can now start your login form with the Express Member Registration form displaying first. For those of you who are not familiar with this, let me show you exactly what this is. It's really cool and if you do have a general user account that members can register or visitors can register with on your website, I would highly recommend enabling the Express Members Registration on your site. Um, it will definitely help you increase uh, your subscribers and your general users or whatever you're calling them for that membership plan. Uh, let me show you uh, what this is and how we can enable it. Okay, so anywhere there is a login form, for example, if you go to member login, um, you can see I've enabled it on this site. We see another tab here, it says register new account. And then there is a form here to register a free account. Now, where else do we see the login form? There are certain areas around the site where we might see a login form. For example, if we're looking at member results or blog articles or other coupons or events, um, if you have the bookmark favorites add-on, you might have a like button. But in order to like something, you need to be logged in. So again, here we see also the login form or the register new account. So in order to enable the Express Member Registration in the first place, we go to our general settings in the settings area of the admin. And it's in the first tab, the general tab. If we scroll down, we see this option here, Express Sign Up Membership Plan. So we need to pin the Express member registration to a free signup plan. So there will be a list of your free signups here, or you can disable it. By default, it is disabled. So people will just see a login form, no alternate tab to register. Uh, but in this case, this sample website has two free plans, a general user or a free local business listings. Let's keep it on the free general user account. And this is the new setting here, start with express registration tab selected. Let's click that and hit save changes. And let's actually duplicate this tab and compare the difference here. And this was the original tab here. I had it open, it was on member login form. But now if we go and click on the like button, it starts on the register new account form, which might be an action you want more people to take rather than logging in if they're not already logged into the site. So I do feel that this would encourage more people to register accounts as they're trying on your site, such as liking a member, a coupon event, something like that. Um, and of course, if they do have an account, then in this case, they can toggle to the member login tab and go ahead and log into their account. So it's a very simple setting, but I think it'll be very effective in helping you register more subscribers uh, and users to your site. Let's take a look at it on just the member login page. Um, over here, it's again, starts on the register new account or you can toggle to the member login tab here. Okay, great, and there is a new form field type the ability to have a phone number plus selecting a country code. Um, so before there is a phone number field, it's just a field where people can enter uh, their phone number. Uh, but this new form field type has a drop down where they can first select their country code for their phone number and then in the next input box, 
enter uh, their phone number as they normally would. Let me show you what that looks like and where you can enable that on your site as well. Uh, so I do have a sample here. This is a, a sample form we created for an ebook. Uh, so we have them enter their name, their email, and we can see here with this new form field type, there is a drop dropdown. Um, it has the country codes and also the phone number uh, dialing codes uh, to select here. So you, if we put Costa Rica as CR, like I had here an example, I could go ahead and select that and then put the rest of my number here as I want to. And if you would like to enable this uh, form field type, maybe you have a custom form, maybe you want to update the form that's in the contact details tab that members, where members are currently filling out their phone numbers and ask them to put their country code, uh, let me show you where you can set that. This would be in the form manager. And you can apply this to any custom form that you have. It's just like a regular form field type now. So this is the sample ebook download that the page that we just looked at. And if you wanted to add this, you can just uh, click on add a field and you can, it's in the fancy fields area. And here it is country code plus phone number. So it's under the normal phone number form field. It's called country code plus phone number. And that's going to put the drop down with the flags and the uh, country code IDs uh, that users can select first when they're entering their phone number. So pretty straightforward there. And also kind of related to localization here, um, you can now set your website's time to be either a 12 hour format or a, a military time or 24 hour uh, time format. Different countries have different preferences. So if your site is serving a country that uses a 12 or 24 hour time format, you can now edit this in your general settings. I can show you exactly where this new localization setting is. We can toggle over to the general settings area in the admin and this is under the localization tab this is a really cool tab this is where you can set the primary country of the website the primary time zone a date format and here we have the new one the time format so again you can choose a 12 hour or a 24 hour time format on my iphone i prefer to have the 24 hour time format i use it as a mind trick to help keep things uh, a bit sharper uh, so i have to you know 1749 i have to know exactly uh, what that is just a little way to keep things interesting throughout the day all right and a ton of new things are coming down the line i've only taken a small sample here of what's to come we are updating the user interface for the domain manager and here we are going to include email deliverability settings and options via domain authentication, being able to authenticate your domain so more of your emails land in your members' inboxes. I can show you a preview of the direction this is headed in. It's not completed or released yet, uh, but I can show you a quick uh, look at what this is going to look at. Uh, this will be the direction for the new domain manager layout. Here you can manage your domain name and we're going to show you a few stats. Uh, for example, who the registrar is. If the domain is about to expire, that's public information. We can uh, notify you with an alert here. And also just to troubleshoot your connection methods. Sometimes you connect a domain name, it's spelled wrong or the A record or the name server method is not connected properly. This will allow you and our support team to more quickly troubleshoot any issues related to your domain connection. And then in addition to that, um, an SSL security tab, uh, not much to see here right now, and an email deliverability tab where you can get some useful information uh, and authenticate your domain with your email sending here, again, to help uh, email deliverability and more of your emails will land in your members' inboxes. So this is a quick preview of what we're working on. We look forward to having this release probably towards the end of next month. And uh, this next one, we've mentioned it a few times in the Facebook group and webinars, the ability to issue credits when your existing members refer new signups, new members joining your site. Uh, this is now going through the QA process, or team is testing it, and I can show you a quick preview of what this would look like. So let's start with the sign up page. If you have this enabled for a membership plan, um, let's say I'm a member and I've referred people to join the site and I've asked them to put my referral ID 
there will be a field here, did someone refer you, enter the referral ID, which will be the referring member's um, ID number. They can input it here, the new person signing up, and if this ID matches a member on your site, and if in the membership plan settings you've you're going to grant members who refer new members uh, credits, $10, $100, whatever it might be. After a successful signup, the matching member's ID number will get those credits. Uh, so this is kind of what it will look like on the signup pages, very simple. And uh, what's cool also is you'll be able to give your members a link to sign up. And I'll show you here. So. You can give them a link, it will be referral ID and then equals their member ID number and it will pre-fill this field. So here we have one, two, three, four. Let's say another member has a referral link, five, four, three, two, one. So it will pre-fill this link here and this member will get credit for that sign up. So the user, the person signing up wouldn't necessarily need to uh, input a value here. Let's take a look at some of the settings in the back end when this is operational. So to turn this on for a membership plan, um, for any membership plan, let's say for uh, people who sign up to membership plan three here, this is the example we're using. And if we scroll down in the main tab here, when this is released, there will be two new settings. So currently we have the member credit settings for, for the main add-on display available credits inside members dashboard, reward credits to assign after a successful signup, um, reward credits after a successful upgrade or plan change. These are the new fields here for the referral credits for members who refer new signups. Assign referral credits to members who refer new members. Now this is based on the membership plan, so you can turn it on or off. In this case, we have it on and then how many credits to assign to the member who referred a new sign up. Uh, so again, it can be $0, um, it can be $100, and you would just save your changes. Now what's really cool is when a member signs up who enters a referral ID of an existing member, and we can go to the search members page, you can actually see this. This will be saved and noted. So we can see some new signups here, and we can see here they joined via self signup, but they were referred by member 290. So uh, this member who signed up entered the member ID 290 uh, when they signed up. So we can see um, if a member signup was referred by another member. Very cool. Uh, if we click on this, it'll just do a quick search. Uh, for this individual member. but So this is member 290 here who's been doing all the referring of new members. If we click on the details for this member in the dashboard, um, we actually will start tracking all the referral signups that this member brought to our website. So we can see that this member has brought uh, just about over half a dozen uh, new signups to the site. And we can see here some of those new signups uh, were for membership plans that granted additional credits to the member. Uh, some of them didn't give additional credits, but we're still tracking the referral ID, the, re the, refer the referral for that sign up here as well. So uh, this is just the beginning stages of what's to come. Uh, this is, I think, weeks away from being released, and we're really excited. It's been a really popular request in the Facebook group, uh, but this is a quick demo of how the referral signups will work and allowing you to grant credits uh, to your members who refer a traffic to your site. Not exactly an affiliate program, but it's uh, it runs on the on the on the gray area, the borderline of being a referral program for your members. And as we mentioned in previous webinars, also still going through its QA process, the ability to import feeds into your BD website. Uh, there will be an API, and you can also use services such as Zapier. Pably and more that allow you to webhook into websites such as Brilliant Directories. Very excited about that one. I think that's going to be a game changer and add a ton of flexibility on how BD integrates with the existing solutions that you're working with to port data into your BD database. I know that was a, a mouthful. I hope uh, some of those will be useful for you guys. If you have any questions about these specific features or comments, feel free to use the raise your hand feature. We can unmute a mic to uh, and just get any questions or any comments about some of these uh, updates that are recently released and coming soon as well. For example, if anyone is interested in using the or excited to use the uh, referral credits for member signups. All right, we see a hand up here, just a moment. All right, Michelle, how are you today? 
That's great. Oh, I'm awesome. Thank you. This is my first webinar to attend live. Welcome. Great to have you here. Thank you. So my question is about the referral ID situation. I noticed that you're tracking free signups. If that person 90 days later upgrades to a paid listing, will the refer, referrer, the one whose ID was attached, will they still get credit? So right now it's just based on new signups. Um, it's not connected to the upgrades. Um, however, that is a good, really good suggestion, um, by the way, to put like a 90 day tracking cookie if they make if they make a, a plan change or an upgrade uh, to, of some degree. I'm just trying to think of, let's say they sign up to a paid plan originally and the referring member gets $10. Then they upgrade to another paid plan. Would then they get the full credit for upgrading to a higher tier plan or would it be a small portion of a new credit? I know those, these, are, these are some of the things we have to think about uh, with those, those small nuances, but. And I see how this is different than an affiliate program where you get monthly recurring revenue, no matter where they are on, you know, any plan, plan one, two, or three. I right. I'll tell you what, though, this is our first iteration at it. And we always try to release like a minimum viable product, even if it's just a simple setting or feature. Uh, but definitely as more people start using it and we gain some feedback, we can see how we can form something more towards an affiliate program now that we have this the idea of a re, of referring member in place now. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion and your feedback. All right. Welcome to Michelle there. All right. I don't see any uh, new hands up here, so very excited for those updates coming down the line. For the tip of the week, we actually have a, another marketplace partner, Yakin Shaw from Business Labs and also BD Growth Suite. Both companies um, are from him. Uh, David, you and Yakin were working on this presentation. Uh, Yakin is a marketplace partner and it is a paid add-on for sites. However, for many websites, I think this could be very useful. So if it's okay, uh, David and Yakin, I can pass it over to uh, you guys. You can tell us more about the member dashboard checklist. Yeah, I guess first we'll uh, we'll just go over kind of what the marketplace is, the uh, the third party developers, marketers, plugins that are available in there for anybody who's not familiar. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but if you're looking for basic website setup, design customizations, data importing, form editing, marketing services, or if you're looking to integrate any third party tools, you can find professionals in the marketplace for all that sort of stuff. All the Developers and marketers that are listed in there have been approved by Brilliant Directories, and we also verify all of the uh, customer reviews that are left for everybody in there. So it is kind of a, a tight-knit community in there. We do keep a close eye on everything. But Yakin has been uh, – Yakin was actually, I think, one of the first uh, third-party developers listed in our marketplace. So he's been working with Brilliant Directories for a long time now, him and uh, his team members. So, uh, Yakin, if you want to take it away, kind of give everybody – some information on what you guys do and BD Growth Suite. Thanks, Jason, and thanks, everyone. So what BD Growth Suite is, I will just give you a recap on what Business Labs is. So Business Labs started its partnership with Brilliant Directories. Brilliant Directories onboarded us, welcomed us, and they taught us what Brilliant Directories is. We work with several hundreds of clients, uh, many several projects, small and big, and then we felt that let's have something that can just help this community what made us what we are today. So that's where when we were on a coffee meet, so an idea came in, start a company inside the company and the name of the company should be BD Growth Suite. So that only serves, helps, and there's so many other things that we have in plans only for brilliant directories website owners, this brilliant community. So that's BD Growth Suite. It's a flagship service for BD websites started all from business labs. The, the team that many of you would be using today, so the exact same team will be decentralized and they will be just doing BD and nothing else. That way we can probably help in a much stronger manner in the days to come. So that's us. Got you. So Business Labs is your original development and customization company. However, you've created BD Growth Suite to just 
be specifically a flagship for Brilliant Directory's websites and, and solutions for Brilliant Directory's websites, right? Correct. Gotcha. Okay, great. And tell us a little bit about where you're from and, and uh, your team that you work with. We have served and we are serving on a daily basis from clients from almost nine countries today, a few countries from Europe, the United States, Canada, the UK, and several other places. So this is our team and many people seeing this webinar would be interacting with many of our people directly. So this is our team. And this team of 20 plus people, how we operate is some of these people are working right here with me from my Indian office and a couple of people are there in US. So likewise, we try our best to manage the more time we stay online so that so that if there is a critical issue going on with any of the clients, so we are there at the old hours. Okay, fantastic. So, Actually, that was my question is being being in India, how do you, you answered the question of how do you manage dealing with uh, users and uh, and clients around the world? I guess you're saying you have two shifts or multiple shifts that everyone's running in and, and assigned to people that they're working with for a specific part of the world? So yeah, we have two shifts going on in India and the couple of people working in the US, they're working their US shift. So we manage almost all the issues on the same day basis. Gotcha. All right, well, you guys are awesome. I've seen a lot of the sites you've worked on, some of the customizations you've done. However, you're now moving towards creating standalone products that can be added to a Brilliant Directory's website. This first one being the member dashboard uh, checklist. Correct. So the idea came through was we worked with all the BD sites and 70% of the projects we work with we are helping them in their launch. So a majority of them came back to us saying that the members are not filling up their profiles or, or it's hurting their SEO because if, if, if there's a page where only the company name is visible and the description is not visible or few other things are not visible, the less content equals to poor quality and it penalizes your service. Absolutely. Uh, more unique content and meaningful content, uh, even a member's profile page has, the better that page will rank in the search engines, as opposed to just being a name and a phone number like any yellow page uh, site. We want them to fill out that, that rich content to add, to make your website a, a bit more valuable with that extra unique content. So definitely we want members to fill out uh, and add as much unique information about their businesses or if it's not businesses, their personal profile, uh, whatever it might be. So definitely see value in, in helping members complete their profiles. We've done a webinar on helping members uh, complete their profiles through email marketing and educating them on how to use the site. Uh, this is a more visual way of uh, encouraging members to complete their profiles. I'll take it here to the next tab, Yakin, and you can tell us kind of what we're looking at at the animated GIF on the right and uh, a little bit more about the member dashboard checklist as well. So right, the main problem that we saw, we actually launched our own directories and since we are all in this business and we, we know many people in our industry, we launched so many Chamber of Commerce directories locally and we interacted on one-on-one -on -one basis with 600 odd members personally on the telephone that what made them not fill up everything. Uh, and the answer was when we asked them 25 questions, they have answers to 12 of them and not 12 of them. 80% of the times the members who are listed, they, their managers are filling up their profiles. So if so we ask them, when did you incorporate? And the manager don't know. They have to ask their boss. And this happens with SMBs. This happens with small businesses. If our directory is all about small businesses and SMBs, their manager who have started a job recently, they will not have all the information up front to fill up a full profile. So they have limited information today. So we created this in such a way. You have five minutes. You have X, Y, and Z in the information. Come, click, submit, go. Tomorrow, come back with more information, submit and finish it. So they don't need 100% all the information right now to complete their profile. Yeah, yeah I think so, you brought up a good point. 
too, just, um, you know, if you're asking for 25 pieces of information, um, something visual like this not only feels good for the member filling it out, but it's a good guide for what's left that's required or critical uh, to complete. If the website is just asking for name, phone number, a photo, and, and an about me section, perhaps you don't need something like this checklist. Maybe you, you do, uh, even for something that short, but I can definitely see when you're we're looking to extract more data from our members and to encourage them to complete that critical data, something visual like this and something that breaks it up into chunks can definitely be of value. Yes, that is right. And I just wanted to add so that anyone sees this webinar, they understand the need uh, why profile pages, the content on there is important. Please remember, we have a website with home page, search results page, and 10, 20 categories page, results page. So these are 25 pages, but the members will be 1,000. So 1,000 members, and every member has their own unique URL. So 99% of their pages are members' profile pages. If we are if we have done right on this 99% of these pages, the content of it, we are done. Means we have done the great job. We have done 99% of the website rightly. Very good, very, very good. True, um, the member profile pages are usually the majority of the, the pages on this site. So if we're getting our members to complete their profiles, 90% of the site's content is, is in a good place and completed as well. Uh, very good. So what is so what is the process here? So you said the process begins. Uh, the user starts entering their personal business name, kind of like the animation we saw. They just go step by step, filling in the information you and the website owner Yakin have agreed to ask of the members, right? Correct. So the information that you're asking of the member, you customize that for every website owner you work with. It's not the same yes. for every website. Got it? Yes, because every website is different. Some websites don't ask the same things. They ask something completely differently. So I think you've so covered uh, most, most of this, but uh, we can just quickly bree breeze over this. The, the improved user experience uh, when they first log into their member dashboard. I've seen that firsthand with the sample that, that you sent me, and we'll check that out in just a second. Um, reducing the learning curve, because all the information you need is in one place rather than going to those different tabs like the contact details tab, uh, upload your profile photo tab, etc. It's all in one organized list. And because when we have that SEO value, the website will thrive. Yeah, thrive. website will thrive, correct. Right. So what we do, we do with a personalized meeting with every website owner because their website is different. And we understand their priorities that what they want in the checklist, five or 10 things or 15 things, and in what order. And we prioritize the data points, we customize our existing tool to suit their requirements. Okay, so kind of like an onboarding call with the website owner, figure out what they want included in the checklist, um, put those in the checklist, and then you provide ongoing support uh, for, for yeah. whatever you develop? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I think I think the playful user experience makes it easy to digest for the members. But I really liked your answer. The, the end game here is better SEO because when you're using a tool like this, you actually can maybe ask your members for more information than in the regular format that they're currently inputting their information. Basically, users get what's called form fatigue. Uh, so if we can liven it up a bit, uh, break it up, break it down, split it up, uh, whatever you do, the, that will allow us to create longer forms, gather more information, and then have that more unique content on the profile pages, uh, which inherently not is good, not as, is not only good for the visitors who come to the site, but Google and other search engines love that extra unique uh, content. Uh, so Yakin yeah. was kind enough. I mean, this is pretty straightforward here, but I think what's cool is if we see this in action, uh, Yakin was kind enough to give me uh, some login access to a sample member um, and to go through this process. Uh, so we'll just dive right into it to see what uh, this checklist, uh, the member dashboard checklist looks like uh, and how it can work. I created a free sign up a member account on this site. And in my main dashboard, I am presented with uh, these checklist items. So I've already verified my email address. 
Uh, now, normally, if we go to the contact details uh, form here, the, lo the long-winded one, um, which is fine. It works. It's been working great. Uh, it works fine. Uh, this is, I would be presented with all the information I need to enter, uh, my first name, last name, my location. Uh, I can scroll down further, my website links, etc. cetera. Uh, so it's a medium-sized form here. Uh, but what you've done is you've actually broken this up into smaller steps. So the contact details uh, is just that. It's it's just my name here. We can do that. We can do Jason Inc. And we can do founder. And we can do save changes. And do I need to close yes, this? Yes, you can close okay. it. Oh, yeah. okay. And the ch actually, guys, I haven't gone through this yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing it for the first time uh, with you guys. Um, okay, so I've, I've completed that and I've got a validating check mark. Everyone loves seeing green check marks. And I can, in the same page, I can upload uh, my profile photo. Um, let's go ahead and, and do that. Let's see if we have uh, an image we can do. I got a bunch of sample images here. We'll just do uh, this express member registration. We'll say this is our profile photo. Okay, great. And update your brand links. Okay, so these are all the social media links here. Well, just... If you can just copy one of the link right there in the example and copy paste the same. Sure, sure. Okay. And I'll go ahead and save the changes. Okay. And you have a view more button here. So, so yeah. okay. So here you were asking for many other items and this can be as long as of a list or as short as a list as you and the website owner so what we're doing, decide on, right? What we are doing in this site, what we are doing in this site, we ask them the first thing, first five things. And the moment they complete those five things, those five things comes at the bottom, the next five things comes on the first few. Oh, interesting. And these are small nuances you can decide on with the website owner on how it behaves. Yes. Okay. Let's see, I put a link here. It didn't go, it didn't check that one off. So please put the same thing on the Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. Ah, okay, got it. Now for That's this good. website, we would have done something differently. So it means we can go crazy with this. You so now what happens is, yeah, <laughs> right. we can go crazy with this. Okay, great. I love the visual. I love that it's all in one place. I think it was very straightforward. Is there anything else you want to you want to mention about this little demo here? You know, one thing we can even go and uh, I mean, many of the websites we have worked with they do. Let's say they are a property website where people can post their properties or classified sites or content sites. So in the checklist, we can even add things like click here to add your first content and experience that feature for yourself. Click here to post your first job post and experience that. So what happens, and if we do this with three members, the moment they experience, they will feel that we are a complete website because all the parts, different separate parts of the websites are working and functional. Fantastic, we have less profile abandonment and things like that and we're immediately engaging with them. We did do a webinar on how to engage more users in their member dashboard and this is a great complement to some of those ideas. What we can do is maybe we could take a little bit of questions and answers. This specifically is, is a paid add-on uh, as we mentioned before that Yakin's team will um, add to your site. He did mention to me it takes about 10 or 15 hours to implement it because they do have to consult to figure out exactly what you want and then get it working as needed, but definitely worthwhile here. Uh, Stephen, I'll unmute your microphone here. looks like you're self-muted. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? Good, Great. So, so I have a question. So many websites, or, like, or at least my website, has uh, multiple forms. You know, there's multiple plans, and each of the plans have different forms. So how does that work logistically if, let's just say that I have uh, 15 different forms, right? And they're all very, very different because it's different membership plans. Do you customize every single one or do you have like sort of a template and then the admin myself would sort of, you know, configure it the way I want it to get configured? How does that work? Thanks for your question. So how this works is this is a few done for you service. So everything will be coded means the programmers will program it particularly for your use case so when we do a first discovery call we write down everything you can just say that these are your five or ten membership plans and 
for this membership plan I want to ask this and for this membership plan I don't want to ask this and we write it down all of that and we program it accordingly. And if there needs to be a change in the future, Yakin, because you said everything needs to be coded, um, is there anything the website owner can do on their own after the initial implementation of this on their websites? Uh, for example, if they are changing the field names or field labels, uh, that can be carried over. For that reason, we also give a 30 days of free service or changes so that when you oh. launch it, you don't know. And when you experience it more, first-hand experience, you get more ideas on changes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. If you have any more questions for Yakin or just any questions in general, we do have time to help with some troubleshooting or answer questions about your Brilliant Directory's website. I see Patrick's hand flew up there. Uh, how you doing, Patrick? It looks like you're self-muted there. Oh, good, Jason. Thanks for having me. I'm just okay. wondering if I can import posts uh, using Zapier or uh, Pavli. For example, if I want from my own, like my own source, like maybe a spreadsheet or something, well, if I wanted to import a bunch of either events or properties or something like that. Fantastic question. Um, that is the direction uh, that we're going in. As of next month, you'll be able to import members into your site. We're starting with member data first. Um, so you'll be able to port in member data. After the members are working uh, well and correctly, we're going to focus on posts, which will be your events, coupons, et cetera. Um, so I would maybe assume maybe a, an, another month after that, that one will shortly be released. And after that's ready, also leads and member reviews are items that we're looking to be able to import using Zapier, Pabli, and, and the API as well. So uh, we're just a, a month or so away, a month or two away uh, from probably more of those uh, being available to port and import into your BD site. Um, I thought we already had a member import. How would that be different? So the member import is from like uploading an Excel file, a CSV file. Uh, what we're creating is the ability to import members from third-party pro website properties or forms that you have around the internet. So you could have, mm -hmm. in effect, like a Google form on a random website and you can get free members registered into your BE website, um, not related to like importing an Excel sheet. Just okay. You know, that. Yep. Or if there's an RSS feed of data or, or however else you can you know, shovel member data into your site from third-party sources. That's that's how it's starting, and that's how it'll work for your posts as well. Okay, so I should wait for you guys to do it rather than try and do it on my own, right? You can wait if it's critical. Um, you can, you know, obviously, uh, we were trying to push stuff as, as out as quickly as possible. So if it's critical, you might want to take a stab at it if you're familiar with that sort of stuff yourself. Uh, but definitely yeah. when it's released, we'll notify the community uh, when it's ready, and, and we are excited for that one ourselves. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much for your question. All right. Great question. I'm, I'm personally excited for that, uh, the, the ability to port data into your site. I do see Tim's got his hand up here. How are you doing, Tim? Hey, Jason. How's it going? It's going absolutely fantastic. How are you today? Good to see you on the webinar. Um, hey, quite this uh, <clears throat> the API uh, import just sounds like the cat's meow. And so my question is, if we're using a different uh, email marketing software that uses tags, do you think that we'll be able to use, um, import those tags to make smart lists? So that's a really good question. Let's call the tags like a piece of metadata for, for the members, like mem members who have a certain category or, or whatnot. In a nutshell, yes. If you have a smart list, we'll we'll stick with tags. If you have a smart list of members, uh, and the and the the smart list of members who are tagged as cats, we'll just stick with the cats analogy here. With the API, you can create member records, you can read your member records, you can delete your member records, and you can update your member records. So you would be able to update your member records and assign to them these so-called tags using the API. Very cool stuff, very cool stuff. Okay, great, and, you, and you'll be working on it, I'm sure, over months, but first iteration will be uh, coming up pretty soon. Yeah, it's going through the QA process. Um, I'd, I'd suspect no later than the end of, of June, the ability to, to, what's called CRUD, create, read, update, delete, the API for members, uh, should be released, and also not only will the API exist, but also uh, the ability to use tools such as Zapier and Pabli um, 
they work hand in hand. So uh, th those will be released at the same time. Wonderful stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, so it seems like a hot topic, and, and we're just just a few short weeks away from it. Uh, we're very excited for that stuff. So thank you for the question, Tim. All right, um, let's keep things moving along here. I see one more hand up here, if I'm correct. Hi, Michelle. Hi, hey, hey, Jen. So this question is probably coming from my just not being super familiar with the platform quite yet, even though I have done a lot of changes on my site. Um, but categories versus, versus form fields, and specifically looking at how my consumers who are landing on the site would be able to see practitioners or professionals who are virtual or in person or, or either or. Perfect. So when you're setting up your category structure, um, we do have what's called a top level category and then subcategories and sub subcategories. Um, by default, uh, the, the members can be pinned to a single top level category. So you want this to be your most broadest selections. In some cases, I've seen people just have one top level category simply called member, and that's it. And then everything else happens in the sub sub categories. Since your site sounds like it's about practitioners, it seems like if it's just about practitioners and the only options they would have for a top level category are in person, virtual, or both, those could very easily be your top level categories, and then the specialties can be the sub and the sub sub categories. If you foresee other top level categories that they might need to select, you might want to go with an even broader top level category for your for your member member category, something as like practitioner, um, you know, something like that. Is that does that kind of answer your question a bit? It, a, a bit. So I, I made the, my top category a hidden category, and it's going to be uh, or it's going to be hidden, but it's precision health. And then my subcategories are different types of practitioners or different types of medicine or focuses. So functional medicine, naturopathic, integrative medicine, IV therapy, so different services or different like focuses. And then I thought my sub subcategories were going to be different, I guess, sub specialties or focuses within naturopathic medicine, for example, or different reasons the consumer would be searching for a practitioner gut health. Got it. And then and then also the in-person and virtual, right? Yeah. So someone in the Facebook group offered up that that could be done in a form field. It can. Um, you can definitely create a form field and, and have a drop down where they select one of the three. However, I, I do think it sounds like that would be your top level category potentially. Okay. And then the the subcategories would be all the specialties and all the new, you know, the sub the subspecialties. Uh, would be that. I think the most important thing when someone is searching is they're looking for either, you know, the virtual, the in-person, or they don't care the either in-person or virtual. And and same with your practitioners, they either offer one or the other or both as well. And I can see, let me just go to, let me go to a sample site here. This is a, an expert witness or, or lawyer uh, directory. However, let me just quickly do a search here. So here, they're using um, type of professional, uh, you know, it can be, this would be like in-person, virtual, or both, and then specializing in adoptions attorney. And if there was a sub subcategory, it would be here. So the system does support all those tiers. Plus you can even have a location field where people can enter their zip code or a city on top of doing all these filters as well. Category hierarchy is, is always tricky, um, especially when you're starting your first directory or, or you're, you're not 100% sure on how BD works um, with category structure, but um, th does that give you any, any clues as to kind of how to restructure what yes. you've done? Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. I like the drop downs because it's good for the user too. They're just kind of clicking. Um, they don't really need to type anything. And especially when, when it's locate where there's a location field as well, um, it really makes it a complete search. All right, great question there. Thank you so much. All right, we've got a good friend, Jeff, here from Australia. How are you doing, Jeff? Good, thanks. Um, I did put a, a question in the Facebook group about uh, featured and non-featured uh, listings on the front page through a featured streaming app. Yes, it, you, uh, you need more than 
the current limit that's there, right? Yeah, before that was modified, it just had featured or don't feature. Um, and then they put a limit on it, uh, 1 to 24, I think. Uh, we've got featured listings uh, more than 50 odd, um, which we turn on for those particular uh, members who are randomised on the front page streaming. So I was just wondering whether that could be lifted or is there any way around that? Or Yeah, you can in the the regular streaming members widget is instead of going and selecting all the members who are part of that plan, you in the regular streaming widget, it's not the featured one, you can choose which members of which plan should be included in this. And then you could set that to uh, sort order random. So this would include all the members of a membership plan and always randomize them. So you don't have to pick and choose members um, from that plan and set them as featured. Just another another okay, thing. Okay, yeah. Do here. Well, that's the way around it. Yes, I can use that. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. All right, guys, we are just about um, out of time here. Let me see if there's one more hand up we can take. We got our good friend Robert here. I don't want to leave you leave you hanging there, Robert. It looks like you're self muted. How are you today? Uh, yeah, well, I was just really quick, and I I kind of searched for it in the group too, and that was about what are options what options are people using for like a, a, a shopping cart? That's a that's a great question. It's actually been asked in the Facebook group. What's really uh -huh. great is, and Brilliant Directories is not a, an e-commerce solution. It's, it's, you know, it's a directory right. solution. Right. However, well, mine would be, yeah, services. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be selling products, it's services. That's, that's perfectly fine um, as well. There are some posts in the Facebook group. If you search for Equid, okay. Equid is like a Shopify. They are an e-commerce solution. And more and more of these e-commerce solutions, and I think Shopify, even if you're gonna only use their embed, code you can it's uh -huh. like nine nine dollars a month or, or something like oh. that if you're not if you're not going to create a website with them you're just going to have a database of your products and then use yeah. their embed code it's something like nine or, or something really nominal uh per oh, month okay. okay but let's just do a quick google search together uh equid embed code uh equid for any website i never heard of equid <laughs> It's it's pretty it's pretty popular. I'm seeing the name more and more uh, around, and I think it's just okay. really easy to use. See, adding Equid to website builders and CMSs that's like adding it to your Brilliant Directory site. So basically, yeah. it's an embed code for your shop. You know, even Amazon stores you they they provide an embed code so you can you know embed your Amazon store on on a on a site. Uh, even oh, for affiliate, affiliates as well. So affiliates are just mm -hmm. just selecting books and stuff in certain niches and then putting buy links on, on their sites using their embed code. And let me also share Shopify embed code. Yeah. Again, these are just simple Googles. But okay, you uh -huh. can, yeah, adding a buy button code, you know, there's if you just Google it, you can do some searches here. And there's plenty of okay. solution, e-commerce solutions, um, and they do all the heavy lifting for you, Robert. And then and I assume I can hook my Stripe up to that somehow. Yeah, it would probably be with shopping. Yeah. I see Ryan's hand up. Usually that means he's got a good tip for us. I'm going to unmute oh. him as well here. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Hey, hey good. Thanks, Jason. Um, I just had a demo for that. If you want to see the equity that we set that up for several clients, if you want to just do a quick demo. Let's, um, let's, oh, okay. just, Where can I? Just go to togetherwell.org. Okay. Um, okay. And forward slash shop. Before so a lot of times people do it for like swag stores or, or something like that, but this it embeds right inside of BD. It looks great and has a shopping cart oh, functionality and stuff. For, yeah, for selling services though, I, I'm not selling a product. No, well, I mean it would be the same thing. You would just list the service, okay. right? Got it. Got it. A picture. Yeah. Of. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All Perfect. right. Well, thank you. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you guys. Thank you, Ryan, for sharing that. All right, guys. Well, another awesome webinar Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and hanging there with us. Um, if you guys are interested in the member dashboard checklist, you can go to bdgrowthsuite.com or email Yakeen directly at support at bdgrowthsuite.com. He'll be taking care of everyone in the webinar today, making it easy for you to get uh, that plugin for your site. Uh, let's just backtrack here on some of the, the slides. 
and yeah, we got to touch on the, the brilliant directories marketplace. Um, again, after you've exhausted all your efforts working on your BD site with the default settings, if you still feel that you need a helping hand or a small tweak that doesn't exist in the default settings of BD, the marketplace is a great place to get some quotes uh, and connect with some certified partners and developers. Lots of BD Lab updates this week. The APIs are coming soon in the next month or so. Looking forward to that. You can join the Facebook group. You can head on over now, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. And again, subscribe to our YouTube channel, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash YouTube. Guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been really fun. I look forward to seeing you guys very soon. Have a great day and a brilliant week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.